The year 1970 marked the dawn of a vibrant and transformative decade in pop culture. As the swinging 60s came to a close, a new wave of creativity and social change swept across America. Today, I am going to look at some classic television shows that premiered in the fall of 1970. The Odd Couple brought humor to the small screen with its portrayal of two mismatched roommates. The show, which premiered on September 24, 1970, and ran until 1975, starred Tony Randall as the fastidious Felix Unger and Jack Klugman as the more laid-back Oscar Madison. Based on the Neil Simon play of the same name, the series explored the comedic tension between the meticulous Felix and the careless Oscar, and their constant bickering yet undeniable bond made The Odd Couple a heartwarming show about friendship, proving that opposites really do attract, even if they drive each other crazy in the process. Monday Night Football revolutionized how Americans watch sports, bringing professional football excitement to primetime television. In the early 1960s, NFL Commissioner Pete Rozell envisioned showing a weekly football game during primetime hours. He initially had trouble getting the idea off the ground. Friday nights were for high school football, Saturdays were for college football, and he knew that he couldn't do anything to hurt the attendance of those games. In the mid and late 60s, The NFL started experimenting, airing a game once a season on a Monday night during prime time. The experiment was successful enough to negotiate a deal with ABC, and weekly Monday night football was born. Pete Rozelle's vision came true. Monday night football ran on ABC until 2006, when it moved to its new home on ESPN, where it is still shown today. Remember... Friday night is family night with Alice and Greg and Shirley and Hal and Waldo. The Partridge Family premiered on September 25th, 1970. The show followed the adventures of a widowed mother played by Shirley Jones and her five children as they formed a rock band and hit the road in their colorful painted school bus. David Cassidy played the eldest kid and heartthrob of the group, Keith Partridge. The beautiful Susan Day played Lori. Danny Bonaducci was Danny, and the two youngest, Tracy, played by Suzanne Crow, and Chris, played by Jeremy Gelblax in the first season, and Brian Forster took over the role starting the second season. Dave Madden's portrayal of Reuben Kincaid, the ever patient and somewhat exasperated band manager, brought a steady dose of humor in order to the family's chaotic musical escapades. The show blended musical performances with the ups and downs of family life. The Partridge family wasn't just about the laughs. It was a cultural phenomenon, capturing the spirit of the era with its catchy tunes and feel-good family vibes. The show ran for four seasons before ending in March of 1974. Partridge family, wake up with Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Next up is a show that didn't technically start in 1970. It was a mid-season replacement that premiered on January 12, 1971, but I'm including it anyway. All in the Family. It was a groundbreaking sitcom that fearlessly tackled social issues with humor and candor. Created by Norman Lear and based on the British sitcom Till Death Do Us Part, The show revolved around the Bunker family, led by the blunt and often controversial Archie Bunker, played by Carol O'Connor, his ditzy but kind-hearted wife Edith, played by Jean Stapleton, their daughter Gloria, played by Sally Struthers, and her outspoken husband Michael, who Archie regularly calls Meathead, played by Rob Reiner. With its unflinching exploration of topics like racism, gender roles, and class differences, All in the Family challenged viewers to confront their beliefs and biases head-on. The show redefined what a sitcom could be and left a lasting impact on American television, proving that comedy could be both entertaining and thought-provoking. 
the show has been ranked as one of the best American television shows ever made. The original chairs Archie and Edith sat in weekly are on display at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. And All in the Family is one of the most watched television shows of the 1970s. All in the Family ran for nine seasons with 205 episodes. The Mary Tyler Moore Show starred Mary Tyler Moore as Mary Richards, a single career-focused woman working as a television news producer in Minneapolis. The show broke ground by portraying a central female character who is neither married, widowed, or financially dependent on a man, a rarity on American television in 1970. With its sharp writing and memorable ensemble cast, which included Ed Asner, Ted Knight, Gavin McLeod, Valerie Harper, and Cloris Leachman, the show struck a perfect balance of humor and heart. The Mary Tyler Moore Show received 67 Emmy nominations and won 29, which for many years held a record for the most Emmys won. However, Frazier came along and beat them out, winning their 30th Emmy in 2002. The Mary Tyler Moore Show ran for seven seasons with 168 episodes. The Flip Wilson Show was an hour-long variety show starring comedian Flip Wilson as both the host and performer. Flip was known for his charismatic personality and had a range of entertaining characters, including the sassy Geraldine Jones and con man Reverend Leroy, minister of the Church of What's Happening Now. Flip brought a fresh and energetic spirit to primetime television, The show featured a mix of comedy sketches, musical performances, and guest appearances by some of the biggest stars of the era. The show showcased Flip's comedic genius and marked a significant moment in television history. As he became one of the first African-American entertainers to host a successful variety show, he broke barriers and brought laughters to millions. The show ran from September 17, 1970 until June 27, 1974. The premise of McLeod was adapted from the 1968 Clint Eastwood film Coogan's Bluff. The show's blend of Western cowboy and big city crime drama drew an immediate fan base. Starring Dennis Weaver as Deputy Marshal Sam McLeod, the show followed this fish-out-of-water lawman from New Mexico as he navigated the gritty streets of New York City. One of the most memorable images from the series is McLeod on horseback, galloping through a bustling New York City street, surrounded by taxis and traffic and towering skyscrapers. McLeod's Western charm, keen instincts, and unconventional methods made him a memorable character in a sea of urban detectives. The popular show aired on NBC from September 16, 1970, all the way until April 17, 1977. Those are some of the television classics that premiered in the fall of 1970. If you have a favorite show from 1970 or are curious about shows from another year, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.